Here again is another problem dealing with enthalpy changes. In other words, heat released, given off through reactions or heat absorbed through reactions. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the enthalpy change, the amount of heat either absorbed or given off by this following reaction. You take solid, two moles of solid sulfur. We add to that three moles of oxygen gas and we get as a result two moles of sulfur trioxide. Hmm. We don't know what the enthalpy change is, but we have some reference equations. We have two equations that involve sulfur and oxygen that give us enthalpy changes. The one, the first one is sulfur dioxide, gives solid sulfur and oxygen gas. Of course, that's not an equation that works on its own. You have to kind of push it, give some energy. You need 296.8 kilojoules of energy to make that reaction work. On the other hand, we have another reaction. We have two moles of sulfur dioxide gas. We add oxygen gas to that, and that will react to give us two moles of sulfur trioxide gas, and that actually is an, what we call an exothermic reaction. It gives off 197.8 kilojoules in that reaction. Can we manipulate those two equations in such a way that we end up with the very same equation that we have over here? So we need to kind of algebraically add those, multiply them with some numbers, maybe reverse some equations. So let's come up with a good strategy. Notice that on this equation I have sulfur trioxide on the right side and I look over here and I have sulfur trioxide on the right side so maybe I'll start with taking this equation and putting it right over there. Not only that, I need two moles of it and there's two moles of it here so I'm well on my way to getting that equation. So let's take equation number two and placing it right there. So all I have to do is simply take equation number two and placing it there and I end up with two moles of sulfur dioxide gas plus one mole of oxygen gas to react, give me two moles of sulfur trioxide gas. All right, and the corresponding enthalpy change is delta H is equal to minus 197.8 kilojoules. All right, that's a good start. Now also notice that on the left side equation, over here I have solid sulfur and, hmm, in the first equation here, I have a solid sulfur, but I have it on the right side of the equation, not on the left side of the equation. Not only that, I need two moles of it, and I only have one mole of it here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that equation, I'm going to turn it around, multiply times negative one, and then multiply the whole equation by two to get two moles of solid sulfur there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation number one, and multiplying it times negative two. So it's negative two times equation number one. So the negative means I'm turning the equation around. The two means I'm multiplying every number in front of every compound by two. So when I do that, on the left side I get two moles of sulfur, two moles of solid sulfur, plus two moles of oxygen gas, two moles of oxygen gas, and on the right side of the equation, I will get two moles of sulfur dioxide, two moles of sulfur dioxide gas. Notice the corresponding enthalpy change. Since I turn the equation around, this will become negative. And since I multiply times a negative two, this, uh, by a two, I will get double that, but negative. So if I double that, I end up with minus delta H equals to minus 593.6 kilojoules. All right. Now, I have the suspicion that when I add these two equations together, I will either get something really close to that or exactly that. Let's see if we're correct. So we're going to add the two equations together. When we do that, on the left side, we get two moles of sulfur dioxide. It's a gas plus one mole of oxygen gas plus two moles of solid sulfur. Mm, I got ahead of myself here. Two moles of solid sulfur and plus another two moles of oxygen gas. Those are all the reactants on the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equation, I end up with two moles of sulfur trioxide gas and two moles of sulfur dioxide gas. And of course, when I add the two equations together, I must add the two enthalpy changes. So I add those two together. So I end up with a delta H is equal to this added to this. Hmm, let's see here. If I add that, I get, looks like, 791.4, minus 791.4 kilojoules. All right, let's first simplify the equation and then compare. Well, I have one oxygen here plus another oxygen, two oxygens there. Add those together, that gives me three. 
I have two moles of sulfur dioxide over the left side equation and two moles of sulfur dioxide on the right side equation. So those two cancel out. And notice when I look, what I have remaining is exactly what I end up over there, just slightly rearranged. So let's write this one first. So we have two moles of solid sulfur plus one mole of oxygen here plus another two moles. That's a total of three moles of oxygen gas that reacts to give me what's left on the right side, which is two moles of sulfur trioxide gas with, of course, the enthalpy change delta H equal to minus 791.4 kilojoules. And this is exactly the same equation as I had over there that I was looking for. And that's how you do enthalpy changes in a very slick, straightforward, dare do, I, do I dare to say easy way? Well, after a while, when you get used to it, they're not so hard anymore. So I'll do a few more examples to give you some more confidence in these. All right, that's how you do that.